Hi there, welcome to this video where I'm going to show you an amazing update to Photoshop. Now I'm really excited about this latest addition to Photoshop. If you've got the Creative Cloud membership, then you can also access it. It's only available at the moment in beta form, um, but it will be coming to the main program fairly soon. And it's called Generative Fill. And what it does is it generates anything to fill gaps or create content and it does that by matching lighting and the content that's in the existing photo and the perspective and the focus and it is just so clever and so quick it's just mind-blowing so stay tuned in this video because i'm going to help you to really seriously enjoy your photography Now, the reason that I wanted to make this video is because I wanted to share with you just how amazing this update to Photoshop is. It really did literally blow me away, the power of it. I've been using Photoshop now for 20 years and I consider myself fairly proficient at it, but it will allow anybody to make really professional edits to images um, because it uses AI and it's so clever that what it produces is absolutely phenomenal. So let's waste no more time and let's get showing you what this update will do. So if you've got a Creative Cloud membership to get the beta version of Photoshop, all you need to do is to go onto the Creative Cloud desktop, go to apps, and then at the bottom, there are beta apps. Um, and just at the top here is the Photoshop beta. And I've already downloaded it. You will need to download it and then you can open it. Um, once you've got it, you will notice something slightly different. There's the new contextual toolbar, and this basically um, changes depending on what task you're doing, but this is where you access the generative fill from. Now, on the screen at the moment, I've got two mallard ducks, um, and what I want to do is I want to just get rid of one. Now, in the old version of Photoshop, you could probably do this with content aware fill, but what happens with that is the content aware fill will copy areas of the um, picture into the area that you've selected and you can end up getting um, cloning artifacts but with the generative fill it uses AI um, to make sure there's no repeating patterns it's just really clever so this is a very very simple use of it um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a very very rough selection using the lasso tool around this mallard here on the right and then I'm going to click generative fill now you get a box here here that uh, just gives you the option to say what you want to fill that selection with but if you leave it blank then it will do its own thinking I'm going to click generate and what Photoshop will do then is it will send this image out to its servers on the cloud it will do some very clever processing and very shortly this is all happening in real time um, it will give me the result and that mallard there on the right will completely disappear and there's not going to be any repeating patterns like you would get with a content aware fill and the beauty of it is as well is that you get several different options that you can click on to just find the one that you like the best it might be that I prefer the third version, but if you go and have a little look at it, not only has it cloned out that um, second mallard, but it's done things like match the depth of field. If you look at this grass here in the background, that's out of focus. And as it comes further forward, that is in focus more. It's just mind blowing. And this is a really simple image. So let's look at a different image that is even more impressive. Now, I haven't chosen this image because it's a particularly great one, but it's a great example of something that everybody will take when they're on holiday. But you have the problem that all of the tourists in these kind of locations end up getting in the shot. And it's very difficult, unless you're very fortunate, to get a shot that doesn't have loads of people in. And so with the new generative fill, we can very quickly and very easily remove them. So the main problem here is this guy here stood right in front of the tower. Um, and so what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to very, very roughly draw a lasso 
um, around that person. I'm going to click generate to fill and I'm going to click generate. The image will go to the cloud again. Photoshop will do its thinking and what it's doing is it's using lots of different um, photographs to think about what needs to go in the, the gap and just its processing power and then very very quickly we get this um, back and now we've got a yellow door which is not actually great when I did this before I didn't get that so every time you do this you tend to get something slightly different but if we choose one of the other options then that's so much better um, that's much more believable or the third option that's even better still. So I'm going to choose the third option because that is much more believable than having the yellow door. Then we've got other people in the way and we've got these people on the right and we've got this person on the left. Now, um, Adobe do suggest that if you're trying to remove um, people or artifacts then to do them all in one go and it just helps so let's give that a go and let's try and put a lasso around these people here on the right there we go and make sure that we've got add um, just at the top left here and we're going to also select this guy here and we're going to see if it can manage to remove both of them in one go. We'll go with generate fill again and generate and then it'll do its thinking. And when I did this before, um, I only did one at once. So it's an experiment for me to find out now whether it will remove both at the same time equally as well as it did when I just did one. So I'm still learning lots about this um, bit of software uh, as I go, but I'm still absolutely blown away by the result now just look at that if you were trying to do that yourself it would not only take ages but it would be almost impossible because those people were blocking um, important parts of the image that you would either have to make up using um, parts of the image or with other stock photographs now there is a little bit of something that's just been introduced on this left hand side but we could clone that out normally um, or do the, another generative fill but that's a few clicks and that would have taken the best part of half an hour for me to clone that out manually but it's taken seconds here is another common problem we've got this guy on the horse which is great but around the frame there are things that are really distracting we've got this um, banner just here and we've got one of his friends taking a photo as well so let's get rid of those and again I'm not really going to spend any time making elaborate selections I'm just using the lasso tool to make a rough selection I'm going to select around there and I'm also going to at the same time select around this person that's jutting in from the left and we'll click generative fill and generate and hopefully Photoshop will do a great job of just removing both of those things in one single click now again if I was trying to re remove that banner there's all of the tree that's behind the banner now I could have probably cloned this tree just here but there's extra things behind there that would just be so difficult to have done now it's a little it looks feels a little bit strange so that is much better the second option um, and then we've got some people as well in the third option so let's go with the second one because I think that is the most successful but we've also got another function that we can do um, if I draw the lasso tool down here on the floor I'm just going to now add a puddle so this time I've told Photoshop I want to generate a puddle down here on the floor um, and again I don't know what's going to happen um, I got a really good one um, when I tried this before um, but again like I said if you don't get what you like you've got different options that you could try or it could just be that you might have to think of a different object to place on the floor um, but it's so clever and straight off um, I think 
that is pretty believable. Um, it seems like it's almost reflecting part of that bush there in the background. Let's see what else we've got. We've got this one that reflects a bit of sky, but the way that it just blends into this grass feels so believable. Um, and all of them are pretty good. Um, I don't know which one I'd prefer. I think I'm going to go with that one because um, it just is not quite as obvious as the others. But it just goes to show what you can do very easily and quickly. Now, I'm sure everybody's got holiday shots like this one. Um, when you're in location and take the shot, you can see all around you and you've got the emotion of being on a holiday there as well. But when you get the shot back home, it just doesn't have the same impact because it's very flat. So what we can do is we can give this a little bit of depth. I'm going to add a boat here in the front. So I'm going to select an area I want the boat to appear in. There we go. I'm going to click generate fill and I'm going to type in speed boat. OK, and we'll click generate. Now, the beauty of this is Photoshop will look at the lighting conditions in the photograph and it will try and match this. It will realize however it does it that um, it's a sunny day and it will try and match that in the um, images that it puts back. Now, the beauty of this particular plugin is that all of these images are safe for use in commercial settings as well as um, for private use because what Adobe is doing is it's only using images from its stock library. So it um, can make sure that all the authors get reimbursed. Whereas other AI art programs scour the entire internet we end up with copyright issues from those kind of programs. This is not the case with um, this plugin here for Photoshop because Photoshop are making sure that they do it correctly. So here we've got different versions of speedboats. Let's have a little look at them. We've got that one and we've got this one and we've got this one. Now that doesn't quite sit in the water as well. Um, that one is pretty convincing. Um, I actually like the way that that one looks, even though it's technically going out of the frame. I just think it sits in the water so much better. And um, what we could also do if we really wanted, because that's quite a dull area of sky, we can click um, generate fill and just click clouds and we'll generate some clouds. And that will fill that um blank area of sky just to make that a little bit more interesting as well. And probably what it will do is it will balance up that um, boat that's down in the water as well. And so it's really powerful and it will really um, help people who are creative much better really convincing. Um, the lighting on these clouds that have been generated completely match these others that are in the sky. You would barely know that they weren't there for real. Let's have a look at some of the other possibles. Um, and I think any of those are just amazing. It's just unbelievable what it will do. I'm going to stick with its first suggestion. So if you're early enough to get the beta version of this program, it's really worth downloading it early because at the moment you get unlimited generates. So you can use the generate as many times as you want to. Now, Adobe have said that when this um, appears in the main version of Photoshop, then you will be assigned credits um, for the generates. Now, they have said that you'll get extremely generous amounts of credits, but there will be a limit on how many generates that you can do. So I don't know how many crates you'll be able to do. That's um, something we'll just have to wait and see. So what I'm going to do with this image, I'm going to extend the canvas to the right um, just to give it a bit more room. Um, I'm going to select this area here that I've just extended, click generative fill and let Photoshop do its own thing. Now, while you've got access to the beta, it's really worth downloading it early because you can just play and play and just try different generates to see what happens. Um, because while it's free to do as many generates as you want, it becomes really addictive. And I've just been blown away on what is produced. Now, if you look at that, um, we've got 
this tree here matching the bits of tree that were there before. So it's used the little bit of tree that's just creeping into this image and it's then matched it up here. The grass matches, the shadow finishes nicely. Let's try one of the different versions. That is possibly even better. Um, and then we've got this. And But the beauty of it is we've got the guy here who's in focus. But when we go out into the back, that is out of focus, but it's matched that. So the depth of field has been matched really well. And it just feels totally believable. Even the pattern in the grass of where the mower's gone follows um, and just doesn't stand out in the slightest. It is so clever. It's just every time you click generate, what appears just blows you away. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this new feature of Photoshop. I am so excited by it and I can't wait to have a further play with it and just keep trying different things. And the good thing is it's available now. If you've got the Creative Cloud membership, you just need to download the beta version and it will be released in the normal version of Photoshop fairly soon. And don't forget that it is all above board because Adobe are just using their stock library so there's no issues about copyright violations. I'd be really interested to know what you feel about the future of AI in photography and art. It's a little bit of a controversial subject and I'm sure it's going to have big impacts down the line. But let, let me know what you think of the future of AI in photography and art. I'm sure it's going to have a big impact in the future and it's going to raise some controversy. But from my point of view, this tool will save me so much time and it is just amazing. I'm sure I've said that lots in this video. If you have enjoyed this video, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Vero account, that's at Dayoked on Photography. Leave me a comment there and you can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel and want to help support me to make future content like this, you can also visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer, so head off over there because a purchase really does help me out and it's very much appreciated. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications because it really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe and I'll see you soon.